Hi, I'm Rachel Tessman from StampYourArtOut.com. I'm an independent Stampin' Up! demonstrator in the U.S. and I'm coming to you live on Facebook on April 10th. Um, <laughs> I'm so excited. I have two cards today, you guys, and I couldn't pick. So I'm gonna share two cards. I hope that's okay. <laughs> I hope I don't overwhelm you. Um, but yes, as I said, I'm broadcasting live on Facebook on April 10th, 2019. After this is aired live, I'm going to upload it to YouTube. Um, if you don't catch what, um, if I don't catch what you're sharing while I am broadcasting live, please, please know that I look at the comments afterwards. And if you do comment, oh, look at the comments are coming in now. I'm, I'm so glad because you know what, you guys, I forgot to, <laughs> I forgot to like remind people and remind my group, um, my group of demonstrators. I forgot to remind people on my personal Facebook page. Anyways, I'm so glad that you came. Hi, Mary Jo. Hi, Kathy. Hi, Karen. Yes, thank you so much for sharing. And Vicki's here. Hi, Vicki. <laughs> Yay, thank you. Um, so if I don't catch what you share while I'm demonstrating, it's because I'm really bad at it. <laughs> Bottom line. <laughs> because I have to look up to see the comments. Hi, Arlene. <laughs> and I am looking down while I'm demonstrating, so your comments aren't like right in my face. Hey, Sandy's here. Thank you so much for coming back, Sandy and Pamela. Oh my gosh, I love it. Um, so we have a huge, huge week um, coming up for a lot of us demonstrators. Uh, a lot of us people who are into Stampin' Up, even if we're not demonstrators, will know on April 15th the products that will be retiring from the current catalogs. And so all this news is coming in from Stampin' Up about lots of different things. So I'm going to share something with you about um, two major tools uh, before we actually get started with the demonstration. Hi, Manuel. Hi, Kim. Good to see you guys. Oh, and thank you so much for sharing. Yes, if you share this broadcast, I actually get to see now. This is really weird. Um, well, it's not weird, but Facebook has changed it so that we can now see who's actually shared the broadcast. But you still have to tell me that you shared in order for me to enter you into the prize drawing. Because yes, there's a prize drawing. Um, every time I broadcast, I do a, uh, a prize drawing live. And then I do a prize drawing from the previous broadcast um, that week later. So I'll be drawing for two prizes, one from last week and one from today. So hi, Deb. Good to see you again. Yes, thank you so much. Hi, Monique. Thank you for sharing. So um, the news from Stampin' Up. We're just going to get right to it, okay? <laughs> <laughs> and I hope you're okay with it, but I'm a Pollyanna. I see the bright side of things. I know that um, when I first heard this news, I was shocked. Um, I was like, what? Are you serious? And then I was like, what happens? And, and then I thought about it some more and I thought, it's going to be great because Stampin' Up! is always looking out for us, trying to give us the best products. So, what's the news? <laughs> the Big Shot, which is our die cutting machine, is leaving us. Um, we're no longer going to be having that. It's not going to be in the new catalog. Um, this this stuff has kind of like been evolving and um, they have not found a replacement die cutting tool yet for the new publication that's coming out June 4th. So um, you're, you're going to notice in the new catalog that there's no die cutting machine, but we're still going to carry tools like dies and embossing folders. And um, I'm still going to use my Big Shot because that's the tool I have. Until Stampin' Up! does come out with something else, um, you can use lots of different die cutting machines like we have before. You might have to add shims and stuff like that. But there's just a lot of reasons, um, supplier and all kinds of things, different kinds of reasons why Stampin' Up! is no longer going to be um, carrying that, that line. But <laughs> yes, Karen says, just as we were shocked by the color revamp last year, yes. So there's always changes, and a lot of this stuff is just inevitable. Life is about changes, right? And it's how you roll with it that kind of determines how you're going to, um, you know, handle things in the future. And, and, and actually, when you have a positive attitude towards stuff like this, you get positive results. So the other thing that is leaving us is my beloved. I really love this trimmer. But again, um, there's issues with the supplier and other sorts of things. And so, um, in fact, we've been having a limit on cutting blades for a long time now because we haven't been able to get enough of them in. And so, <laughs> oh, I'm sorry, Teresa. Yeah, some of you might be hearing this news for the first time. <laughs> Thank you, Deborah. Um, sunshine is better than rain. I love it. <laughs> 
Um, but my beloved trimmer, which I, I think it's the best trimmer out there, it's leaving. Um, I have faith though in Stampin' Up! and I believe that they're going to give us a replacement trimmer. Again, it's not going to be in the new publication, so we're not going to see a trimmer in the new annual catalog. But um, when, when they do have a replacement, they will let us know and we'll be able to sell it, right? And I'm hoping that they will have all the wonderful perks that this other trimmer had. So in the meantime, I'm still going to use my trimmer. So, um, and you can still get it until it retires. New tools equals a good thing. I love it, Kathy. Thank you. So let's go ahead and I, I want to make sure I'm going through all my notes here. Um, yes, share away. If you're seeing friends that are commenting in this thread, please go ahead and say hi to them. I love it when you guys know each other. Um, there's a lot of demonstrators that are going to on stage this weekend. In fact, some people are already traveling. Um, so safe travels to you all if you're going to on stage. On stage is Stampin' Up's convention. And um, when this broadcasts on YouTube and I get po and I post this on my um, on my on my website on Saturday, we're all going to be in the midst of of on stage learning all about the new catalog and new products and all the fun stuff to come. So. Um, so just know that uh, it's a big, huge week for us. <laughs> so go ahead and um, say hello to your friends, uh, share this post, make me giggle. I love it when you guys comment and say funny things and when you also help me out because I don't remember everything. So if there's a tip that I'm not sharing that will help out some other fellow crafters, please share that. Okay, sorry for all the news at the beginning, but I always have to address that stuff. So let's go ahead and move to the computer so that you can see all the wonderful supplies that you're gonna need for these two cards, okay? All right, hang on, I gotta get my picture in picture thing to work. Um, I thought I had that set up, I did not. Look at that, I gotta get, okay, so you guys can't see it, but. And I have to make myself really, really tiny. Because <laughs> a, it's a big list, here it is. Yay, so I'm gonna bring my computer in front of me so I can see it. And we have on there, for two different cards, we're gonna make a card with boots on it and a card with trees, as you can see. We're using the Wood Textures Designer Series paper for both, and again, they're both gonna have like a channel type of effect to them, so 3D looking um, on, on different parts. Um, the Basic Black cardstock for the first card, there's lots of different pieces for that. You're gonna see that um, I'm gonna be punching some of it. There's strips of it. Um, the soft suede, those are just for the front of the card for the different panels. Inside, we're gonna need some very vanilla, and that's the five and a quarter by four inch piece. And then we'll need a scrap for stamping and punching out a sentiment. Copper foil and the wood textures are the fun papers that go along with that card. And also with that, we're gonna add a little bit more copper from down here. You can see the sequins assortment. So we're gonna need our take your pick tool because we're gonna pull out the copper sequins and hopefully my eyes are working today. I've been having, it seems like, you know, once you get old and you have to wear those reading glasses, they just, they get worse and worse really fast. It's not like, you know, going through your first few years of your life and everything just gradually gets <laughs> worse with your eyes. It's going bad fast. I have a feeling I'm gonna have to get stronger reading glasses. <laughs> so, so hopefully I'll be able to see the sequins. Um, stamp sets that we'll be using. We're going to be using two of them for the first card, the Country Living Stamp Set and Animal Outing. In fact, I'm going to grab, I'm going to grab them right now so I don't forget to show you all the stamp sets right away when we switch cameras. Um, and then let's go back over to the Trees card for just a minute. The Trees card um, was inspired by a fellow demonstrator who is an artisan design demonstrator. I love looking at artisan blogs. Um, these are demonstrators that get picked by Stampin' Up! to show off products um, to us in special fun ways and I just love watching uh, or seeing those ideas. So this person is Emma Goddard. Um, she is from CoastalCrafter.com and I'm not copying her card but I cased it in a way like I've copied and, and changed a few things. Um, I've simplified it basically. <laughs> And so we're going to be using crumb cake for the base. We're going to be using some basic black for layering. Vanilla is the main um, neutral card stock. And you're going to notice with this basic black that I'm using 16th inches. Oh my goodness. Um, you guys are going to have to deal with it. <laughs> I'll, try to, I'll try to show you how to you know, measure for that too. But um, it's just over a half inch. And it's really just the tiniest little mark over a half inch. And then um, let's see. 
And then the very vanilla is also gonna be cut like a sixteenth of an inch short because we want it to be on the inside of the card. Wood textures paper again. And when you do the wood textures paper for this second card, you wanna keep it first in a full piece like two by six because then you can get three from one sheet. Um, and then I'll show you how to trim that down. Um, ribbons, I'll be using basic black and the tea room ribbon, I'm sorry, basic black shimmer ribbon and the tea room ribbons. And then if you want to, you can take a screenshot right now. I'll smile. <laughs> so you can remember all that stuff. I did remember to mention um, the floral grid paper. The floral grid paper is special. It does not have measurements on it, as my friend Vicki Spicer had told me, but it uh, definitely is beautiful to work on. <laughs> so you can grab up some of that. It's still available in the online store as of last time I looked. And then the stamp and chamois. I have it this time, you guys. I've forgotten it the last two weeks. I have remembered it. I'm so proud of myself. I'm also proud of myself for remembering the stamp and pierce mat. Ha! Huh. Okay, so let's set the computer off to the side for a minute and go back to the desktop. Um, it's so weird because the desktop looks very yellowish. I'm having a lighting issue in this room. So um, let's see if we can, there we go. Um, <laughs> I wish I had one of those remote control lighting things because right now it seems like it's not bright enough. Although I look like I'm super bright, but my table doesn't. Hmm. I'm hoping this is good, you guys, okay? Um, we're gonna be using th three different stamp sets. I'm gonna show you those real quick. Hang on. <laughs> I'm just gonna, I'm just brightened it, up, brightened it up a little bit more and now I look like I'm really white, but I'm, I'm sorry. I want you guys to be able to see what I'm doing on the table. Hopefully you can still see my mouth move. <laughs> All right, so these are um, the wonderful stamp sets. These two I'm pairing together and you'll see why in a minute. Maybe you can even guess. And then um, this one will be on the second card. The blocks, I already mentioned, I'll be using size D and then two others smaller than that, so B and C. And I think that is good. Let's get started. Okay, so for the first card, you're gonna need a basic black base. And for the base, I am doing, hi Pamela, I'm doing a half sheet of basic black cut this way so here's the other half of it, and then scored here. Now for the other base, I'll be using this half of my crumb cake. So imagine two pieces this way. I'm not gonna get into the details of cutting and scoring for people who are just starting out stamping. I'm sorry about that, but I do have other videos that help you to do that. But um, I wanna just kinda get through these cards quick so that you're not bored, you guys, I'm so sorry. Four inches by five and a quarter, I know you're not bored, that's why you chose to watch, right? <laughs> but I still feel like I need to go a little bit faster. This piece is going to be the main piece that we stamp on, and then these are gonna get layered underneath like that. Now, it feels like you're not gonna be able to see them, but this is where we bring in our beautiful wood textures paper. And I am a slight paper hoarder. I have a little bit of an issue. <laughs> I have saved every one of these unique pieces from several packs of my wood textures paper. And this is like the only other six by six full piece that I have left from the millions of packs. Um, the rest of them are all in this little cello bag. Lots and lots of used up pieces. This is beautiful paper. If you do not have it, you need it because it's like all the wood texture looking kind of designs you could possibly imagine. So I'm gonna grab a piece that is two inches um, in width here, and we'll just grab our trimmer. We're gonna trim that down to just under, I should have written this too, but just under four inches. So you can see if I zoom in, sorry about my arm there. If I zoom in, you can see it's just under four inches. You could do it like a 16th or an eighth or whatever, because what happens is there's gonna be um, a lift on these, on, on two panels of the card, and when you have that lift, it's easier to see the whole edge of the top and the bottom of this. And I don't want you guys to see that. <laughs> so, so we'll just um, set that piece aside because I know I'll use it. And I think the only other pieces that we have are the scraps. So we'll have the copper foil sheet, um, a scrap of black, 
and a scrap of white. So let's get the stamping started. We're gonna grab our boots from our Country Living stamp set. And I am not like a country girl, but that stamp set, I just, I love it. It's so funny that someone who doesn't listen to country music, although, I mean, I, I appreciate it, it's just not my choice. <laughs> it's so funny that I'm in love with the stamp set. It's just, and it's all images. So you kind of have to pair it with another stamp set, which is what we're doing now. I mount my stamps um, kind of crooked on my blocks because I don't want to rely on the um, edges of the blocks for lining things up. So just a tip for those of you there. <laughs> oh, thank you, Michael. She goes, I'm never bored watching your videos. I love it. Okay, so now we're gonna go ahead and ink up our boots with the soft suede. So soft suede on soft suede. And I'm using, because I forgot to put the label on this, I am using my, um, I better move this up a bit here. I'm using the edge here of this side of the boot to make sure my boots are on there straight. Oh, they might be a little crooked. <laughs> All right, yeah, they're a little crooked, that's okay. But you know what, they don't look crooked, only in my mind. And now we'll ink up the words and we'll stamp that onto our very vanilla scrap. I have a feeling I need to zoom out a bit here. Oh, I know, that's probably why it was harder to see because I wasn't all the way zoomed out. And I forgot to do this, you guys. I, I forgot. Okay, so I, I have to admit, um, I have a fake surface on my table. Let's just zoom out for a minute here. Um, can you see it? There's my fake surface. So it's a piece of foam core um, with some fake wooden paper on top. And I've been using this for a couple years for taking photographs against stuff, but it's starting to get bad. It's it's getting ratty. Um, it doesn't look good. So my um, father, my dad, I love my dad. He's the one that did my craft room. He is going to resurface my boring table with some beautiful, I'm going to show you, <laughs> with some beautiful um, like tile. He's going to add this to the top. So I'm gonna have a, a real nice looking wood surface on my table. And that means I need to start using this because foam core has kind of like helped me out with stamping. I don't have to worry about having that cushion underneath my stamps. Now for, for stamps like this, you don't really have to worry about that. But, but when you're using photopolymer stamps, um, do I have photopolymer? Yes, okay, we'll make sure we use them for this other, stamp, this other card, okay? yell at me loudly if I forget. <laughs> but um, for photopolymer, you need to have that cushion there because photopolymer does not come with the foam between the rubber and the block. And so you have to create that foam feel for the stamps in order to get a good image. I'm going to set that aside and really try to remember to use it. Okay, one and a half inch circle punch, turn it over, punch it out. <laughs> Thanks for sharing, you guys. <laughs> and thanks for saying it's lovely tile, Tiffany. Yay, I, I love it. Okay, and then we're gonna punch out some copper with the one and three quarter inch circle punch. And then the last piece will be, where did I, oh, here it is. Will be from um, this black scrap and we're using the two inch. So the two inch circle punch and we're just gonna punch a half of it. You can punch a whole circle and cut it in half if you want to. And it doesn't have to be an exact half, but about half, okay? So we've got those pieces ready to go. Now, we put it together. Ta-da! Okay, so for these two soft suede pieces, you're just gonna take and add adhesive on the back side. I'm gonna zoom in just a little bit again. Okay, all right. So we're gonna just take, I think this is the back side, and put a line of snail adhesive along the back, and then line it up with the basic black strip here. And this strip could be narrower. I have mine at three quarters of an inch wide, um, but you can make it a little narrower or wider if you want to. So now we have um, a little bit of a matting there, and that's gonna go on that side of the card. This one's gonna go on the other side of the card, so we wanna put our adhesive on this side. It does make a difference on this piece because we've already stamped it. So we'll adhere that down. And if you happen to have any extra cardstock that goes over the edges, you can just take your trimmer, um, your scissors, I'm sorry, and trim it up. 
I do have my scissors assigned to paper and ribbon. That way the ribbon one with the little ribbon tied to it always stays sharp for fabric like cutting ribbon, right? All right, next we're gonna take dimensionals. These are fun, fun foam adhesive um, little hexagons here. And we're gonna put three on the back of that. You could put more if you wanted to, but we don't need more. I would say for sure three. And that's gonna go on the front of the cards so that you have an eighth of an inch, about an eighth of an inch border on the top, the side, and the bottom. All right, next, <laughs> thank you. Next we're gonna take and put on the dimensionals on this piece and pull off the backings. There's just kind of like a, um, a little peel away piece that you take off there. I forget, I, you know what, someone has a special name for this and I can't remember what they've been calling it lately. Um, yeah, anyways, that paper that comes off the back of sticky stuff. <laughs> so there we have our boots on the other side, again, with about an eighth of an inch border. Now this piece, I purposely made um, wider. And I did that because I wanted to be able to just slide it in and not have it show um, like I don't want the edges to show on it from the top, bottom, or the sides. So we're going to slide that in carefully. I probably should have... <laughs> Vicki, are you still watching? <laughs> Remember when you helped me make a bunch of these? Um, we actually put this in second and then this. <laughs> okay, so as you slide this in, try not to let it stick. Okay, there we go. Yeah, put that in second. Okay, so now you can see as I'm sliding this in, I'm making sure that there's an even border on the top and bottom. It's slightly shorter, so it's not going to um, not going to be seen. I'll show you when I stick it down. And then I want to make sure that I've got a good um, amount on either side, and we'll stick it down. And then when you hold it up like that, you can't really see the top and bottom edges when you're kind of holding it at an angle. Now when you hold it this way, Sure you can, but when you're holding it just kind of slightly, it doesn't appear like this is a separate piece of paper. It looks like it's part of the window. So this is the channel of the card, okay? It's the, the channel of the card. The other card's gonna have channels on the sides. Okay, next we're gonna add this, and we're just gonna bring that right up flush to the black edge here above the boot. And I just put my finger there to feel it. And then this piece gets stuck along, oops, that's right. Sometimes your, your foil paper has issues, here I'm going to zoom in a bit, has issues receiving snail adhesive. <laughs> so um, I'm going to put the adhesive directly on here. It's very slippery paper. Just make sure that you don't have any adhesive coming really close to the edge of that circle. And then the other thing I want to put on this foil, or actually I can put it directly onto the designer paper is a dimensional and that'll help hold it up and support it and that's going to go here i'm glad you like this thank you all right that was who oh karen thanks karen <laughs> you call them chads oh that's interesting deb release paper i knew it started with an r but i i know that that's referring to like um tear and tape adhesive and that sort of thing but i don't know if you'd call that release paper on dimensionals too but that's what I've been hearing. It's like a fancy term, isn't it? So then we're gonna put um, some snail on the back of this and we're gonna eyeball the words and stick that down, making sure that the words are showing pretty straight on that card. The last steps are adding the sequence. So, oh, we gotta put the inside of the card in. Remind me again, I know you guys, <laughs> I have to look up to read your, your comments, but um, yeah, I got to remember to use that uh, stamp and pierce mat. I actually use it twice on this card, the second card. Let's close this up and make sure it's out of the way so I don't get ink on anything. And open up our sequins. Okay, so let's grab a few. Ooh, I think I have one of every size copper in there. I got lucky on that one. <laughs> All right, so I've separated a few of them out. I'm going to grab the cap off the end of my take your pick tool and now we're going to grab our um, this is fine tip glue now I recommend having a scrap of paper 
when you first start running your glue. So that after you take the, the cap off, then you peel off any dry glue around the tip. You turn it upside down. Don't shake it. You don't want to put bubbles in this glue. Um, and you just kind of squeeze it until there's typically a bubble that will come out at first. So get rid of that bubble and then you can bring it to your card and add your adhesive little dots of what you want. Okay, then when you put the cap back on this glue, I always put my finger right next to it and I can feel because there's like a pin prick. That, oh, sorry, there we go. There's like a pin prick that you have to put into the cap of that glue. <laughs> Let's see if we can do it. There we go. And that will help to keep it open so it won't glue shut. Okay, now I've got my little glue dots on here. I'll zoom in again so you can see. <laughs> Thank you, Andrea. How are you? We just chatted last night in our team page. <laughs> All right, so I'm picking up um, with this little sticky end of the Take Your Pick tool. I'm picking up the sequins that I want and just laying them on the card. And there's the last one, the light, little tiny one. So I have one of each size. And I'll just set that off to the side. Oops, there we go. I'll just set that off to the side to dry. And when it's dry a couple hours later, because this glue takes a little bit longer, um, I, can, I can give it to somebody as a thank you. Oh, and that's the wrong saying. <laughs> I grabbed big, thank you big time. Well, that works for boots too, because boots are big, but... <laughs> This is what I intended. You know what, I did that on purpose. I did that on purpose. Yes, I did, because then I could show you a second version. <laughs> All right, let's get this glue mess out of there and before it falls onto my card. Um, here's the second version, you guys. <laughs> See, that's more clever. <laughs> oh my gosh. Anyways, yeah, together we make a great pair. Get it? A pair of boots but that works too thank you big time oh my gosh so those two sets should go together naturally I'm gonna set these behind me because this one is wet and I don't want it to get on me okay all right so now let's do the second card <laughs> mistakes are just learning opportunities right okay so we have our base card stock we're gonna grab our bone folder I haven't used this in front of you guys yet but there we're going to crease it shut we have the base of our card that's done with crumb cake and then we'll need our basic black our very vanilla and our very vanilla for the inside and basic black for the inside the only thing that we're missing is ribbon and some of this beautiful paper um, I do have a piece that's already cut again to two inches um, let me go back for just a minute here, you guys. Oh, and I'm going to zoom out because I'm going too close again. Um, for that last card we did, you could actually get one, two, three, four cards done with one of these six by six sheets because it's a f just under four by two inches, a four by two inch piece. For this card, you can get three from one sheet because you're using a two inch wide panel. Um, and we're going to, you know, you can see you can get three of those out of one sheet. So we're going to trim this now. We're going to trim it first at the bottom. And I'm actually going to use this side, I think. So we're going to trim it to a half inch. And if I were, okay, so if I were to cut my black paper in front of you, that's this piece here. Remember this one had that weird measurement. Um, thank you, Julie. <laughs> this one had that weird measurement. She said, don't forget the piercing mat. Um, this piece is nine sixteenths. So that's just over a half of an inch because eight sixteenths is equal to one half. And so that piece would get that, if this was black, here, we'll flip it over. Pretend this is black. So we're gonna go to the half inch mark, but then we're gonna go to one more little mark right over there. Let's see if I can zoom in so you can see it. So there's the half inch mark. Just one tiny little fraction of an inch more will give you that measurement. But our wood textures is gonna be exactly a half inch. So we'll trim that and then when we put them together you can see that I have that wonderful little border on there okay so those pieces are ready now this piece is now five and a half inches long so I'm gonna put it in my trimmer 
and you'll notice I think it actually it's two inches it's a little over two inches oh gosh we might have to trim up that tiny piece over there that's okay so we're gonna take and trim that to two inches now okay so this piece is gonna be one inch by five and a half and one inch by five and a half so all we have to do is position it in our trimmer so that it's between the two one inch marks how nice is that a one inch on each side I hope we have that on our new trimmer <laughs> all right so I have my two pieces for that and my ribbon the ribbon the ribbon here it is so I'm going to use a little piece of black shimmer you can see how that shimmers isn't that beautiful I love it and we're going to use some of the tea time ribbon now I have to admit I made a bunch of these cards using this ribbon for my team and so I went through the whole vanilla set of this ribbon. This is actually a two pack. It comes with Coastal Cabana and Very Vanilla with a copper edging. And yeah, so we're not gonna use that on this card because I don't have it, but that's okay. So <laughs> here we go. Let's start with the stamping. Um, put those behind me here. We're gonna need for this three different colors of ink. We're gonna need Crumb Cake, Coastal Cabana, and Tuxedo Black. Um, Pierce mat, there it is, and our waterfront stamp set. The stamps we'll need will be, um, where are they? We're gonna need, oh shoot, where's my, okay, there it is. This one, friends make the good times better. Um, we also need, let's peel that off. We also need this long strip here. Yes, yes, yes we do. We also need the trees. And we need, uh, what's on the inside? Oh, and there's one more. Okay, so this one, this is the one that says hard times, some, I don't know, whatever. <laughs> and we need that one. There. Now we'll set this aside. We'll mount all our stamps. And again, kind of like, you know, do it at an angle so you're not relying on them. That goes on diagonally that way. That, that, this one's going to be using crumb cake. This one's gonna be used in the Coastal Cabana color. The trees we're gonna to have to wash off, which is why I'm so glad I have my, um, my chamois with me. And then we need, oops, we need the words. There's one word, one set of words. And again, mount it at an angle so that you're not relying on the sides of the block. Okay, so I think we're ready. Those are gonna go with the black at the end. Actually, at the beginning. We're gonna start with the black. On this card, it's best if we start at the bottom and build up. So we're gonna grab our Memento Tuxedo Black and our piercing mat. So this is our stamp and pierce mat. I actually have two of them. This one is for puncturing and this one is for not puncturing. I think that's a good idea. Just like with my paper snips to have one for scissors or one for ribbon and one for paper. I'm just suggesting this because then you don't have holes all over your stamp and pierce mat for when you want to peer, when you want to stamp on it. So we're going to grab our words that say friends make the good times better and ink that up. And again, unlike the clear mount or cling, there's no foam um, on these. So you want to have that pressure underneath. Okay. That little bouncy cushion underneath. And we'll just stamp that in the bottom right corner. This is the wrong one. We're gonna flip that over, that goes on the inside of the card. Hang on. <laughs> hey Linda, thanks for visiting. Oh, you have an interesting name for your town. Moose Jaw, Saskatchewan. <laughs> I love it. All right, so this one goes down here on this corner, like that, okay? Now we can set that one aside. Phew, see that I had to wipe my head. That one made me sweat. Now we're gonna grab <laughs> Our Coastal Cabana, we're building up from the bottom, opening the pad in that way. I love that, thank you so much, Connie Stewart, love it. Okay, and this is gonna get stamped off. So we're gonna ink it up in our Coastal Cabana ink and then we're gonna stamp it off. Some people call this second or third generation stamping. If you stamp it off once, you get, hang on. <laughs> I don't wanna get ink on my, um... I don't want to get ink on my pierce mat. There we go. Love it. This tiny grid paper is awesome because it fits right on your 
little mat like that. So we'll stamp it off again and we'll add that to making sure I'm facing this the right way. Do I want to go the other way? I do. I want to go this way. Okay, so now I'm going to stamp that on here like that. And that's kind of like making a little lake. Um, we're going to do that again. So we're doing that twice. If you see me looking off to the side, it's because I'm cheating. <laughs> I'm looking at my finished card because I want to make sure I get this one right. <laughs> okay, so we've done that. Now we're going to grab our crumb cake ink and open that up and add the land. This is the land. Okay, so we're stamping that with full, full crumb cake ink. And if it helps, you can keep your grid paper lined up too so that you're using the lines on your grid paper to make sure that this piece is going straight. Thankfully, this waterfront stamp set doesn't have, um, it, it doesn't have real crisp lines. So, you, I mean, if it's angled slightly, it's still gonna look good. Got a little thing on there. Oh well. Okay, so now we need our trees and we're gonna stamp our trees first in crumb cake. And we'll do that really close to the side and a little up high. And then we're gonna stamp it again. We're just gonna lift it up and we're gonna shift it without re-inking. So we're gonna do second generation or stamping off to get the next set of color. And we're gonna put that a little bit higher, right about there. Okay, so now it looks like, well, it looks like there's a bird flying in the air too, but <laughs> from that little mark there. But now you can see, it looks like there's trees further back in the background. And then we're gonna clean this off with our Stampin' Chamois. So this is just this wonderful cleaning mechanism that I've cut into tiny pieces. I think I have four out of one, so I just cut it into tiny pieces and that way it's transportable. I can carry it everywhere. You just rinse it out. You can sometimes use soap to clean it if you want to, but it's ready to clean my stamp, okay? Now I'm gonna ink it up with the black. So now I'm using the tux Tuxedo Memento Black. It is a beautiful set, isn't it, Tammy? Okay, and that's gonna get stamped even slightly off from the rest of the trees. I use the tree trunk to make sure I'm lined up um, parallel with the edge of my paper. And so now I've got some beautiful trees that are standing out. Um, oh, before we close that up, we need the inside and the sky. So I'm bringing these, this one back in, and I'm gonna stamp the sentiment on the inside of the card. And I'm going to stamp some more blue up above. And this time I'm gonna stamp off twice or use third generation ink. And we're just gonna kind of make it go a little off, off like that. Now it helps to refresh your ink every time because that way in case you go really close to an edge and you shift your stamp, you won't get a crisp line from an edge. So now we have a little bit of blue in the sky that's a little bit lighter. All right, let's close up our pads so we don't put our fingers in them. So you have two chamois. Um, you cut one into quarters. Awesome, awesome. Love it. Yeah, you can trim these things and it doesn't hurt them at, a bit at all. <laughs> it's awesome. All right, so tucking those things out of the way. The next thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna grab our other pierce mat. So we're bringing this one in and we're gonna bring in our take your pick tool and pull off the cap and we're gonna use the pointy edge. So there's a pointy edge. Gosh, this thing comes with a whole bunch of stuff. There's a spatula, there's stylus tools. So we want the pointy part and we want our ribbons. I'm having an issue here, hang on, there we go. <laughs> All right, next we're going to add this to this piece with snail adhesive. I'm gonna shift it over here so you can see a little bit better. Okay, so that gets stuck onto there. So you have just a small little black edging on there. And then we want to put adhesive on the back of our ribbons. So let's grab, I think I'm just gonna do one. That's fine, we'll just do one. Grab our ribbon scissors. And now we've got two ribbons here, but one is super skinny. So this is what I do. When I have a really skinny piece of cardstock, paper, ribbon, um, 
I take and um, bring my snail and that skinny piece, I put it next to something that's a little wider, and then I put adhesive on both of them at the same time. And we can go back over the black one and add more adhesive to it, but I just wanna make sure that I'm covering this skinny piece of ribbon. Okay, so now I have adhesive all the way along the back side of this ribbon. And I'm just gonna make sure I have enough on this. This is the perfect width. If you have something um, 3 eighths of an inch or wider, it typically works well with that snail adhesive. So now I have ribbon on the back of each of these and this one's gonna get added to, <laughs> here, we'll just stick this on the back of my hand because it's very sticky. There we go. So this one's gonna get stuck here and let's use our grid paper again to kind of guide us. This one's gonna get stuck like that and wrapped around to the back. And this one's gonna get stuck like this. And it's just a little further in so you can see the edge uh, of the black on both top and bottom. And now we bring our pierce mat in and our pointy tool and our brads. We have metallic brads and we have some beautiful copper ones. So I'll just grab a big copper one. We're gonna poke through from the front to the back. Hopefully this works. <laughs> I think I used a, my um, small piercer for this earlier, but I really wanted a nice big hole so I wouldn't lose it. That's working. Okay, so we're getting a nice big hole in there and we're going to pull it out and quickly add the brad before it closes up. <laughs> oh, I have to push it again. Hang on. Hang on, guys. <laughs> okay. And I say before it closes up because that ribbon, like the threads of it, they tend to like get connected again to each other. And now I have the brad through there. See, easy, right? <laughs> Love it. This is where fingernails come in handy. You can just grab the, the legs of that brad and pry them open. And then you can take um, the back of your one of your blocks and press it flat like that. And now we just add this with dimensionals to our card. We'll, we'll get it set up here. I'm gonna add a dimensional to where the ribbon is because I don't want the ribbon to come free just in case the adhesive isn't strong enough. And then we'll add dimensionals up there and down there. Let's just pull off the release paper. <laughs> I remembered it, yay. Okay, there we go. Oh, and one flew onto my computer. Okay, so that's set, we're gonna set that aside. We're gonna work on the inside to assemble that right now. This, this, and this get layered. So this piece, actually, you know what? Don't stick that on yet. Just put adhesive on it. Don't stick it on yet, okay? You'll know why. Let's grab that for a minute. Okay, so this has to get put in first because I did not trim this, sorry. I did not trim this exactly to, oops, hang on. There we go. Um, to less than four, five and a half inches. It's a little bit longer. As you can see, it's kind of hanging over the edge there. So, um, <laughs> and there's the bad side. We're just gonna add adhesive to this. We're gonna tuck it up inside the card so it's centered and it's able to be closed. So now you can see there's a little bit of that vanilla sticking out and that's like a 16th of an inch, okay? So we can just um, trim that up now. When you trim it up, it helps to have like a guide, which is the um, larger cardstock on top. And then you can just take and use the scissors along that to trim. Now we can add the bottom pieces. So we can put this right along the bottom here. And I forgot, I forgot another thing, you guys. Oh, jeepers creepers. Remember, this wasn't exactly two inches. <laughs> okay, let's see if we can do this. Hang on. Um, let's see. Because <laughs> I don't remember how many inches it was. Um, let's just make this two inches wide. I'm creating a trick right in front of you guys. I hope it works. All right, so now we can take that and lay that next to it. Ah, that worked. And trim. Now it's two inches. 
<laughs> okay, yeah, have that one cut ahead of time. Then you just put that at the bottom. So now when you open the card up, you're gonna see a little bit of that wood paper. Let's take these two papers and add them to the side. So this is where the channel part of the card comes in. The channel is the part that goes down, kind of like a little river. We'll add that. And we may have to trim these up too. So just use the edges, go right up to the edge of your card. And it doesn't matter if you have them lined up the way they originally were together. It doesn't, I don't even know how that went anymore. I mean, I don't have to have it like that because they're so far apart. So I'm actually gonna turn it this way, just to be a rebel. <laughs> and we're gonna put that down like that. Good morning, Brenda. Thanks for joining. And thanks for sharing, Tammy. So you can see there's a little bit extra again. So just flip it over and use not your ribbon scissors. Use your paper scissors and trim it up. So two cards, two beautiful cards. You can make a zillion beautiful cards with this paper, but it it's really, oh gosh, I just love this paper. I have to show you Emma's card. I'll, I'll pull that up on my computer. So this one just goes right on the top like that. Ta-da! <laughs> I'm so happy. I love these cards. I Honestly, I couldn't decide which one. So we will put that one there and this one here and there. Ta-da! Now you can get a screenshot if you want to. Or you can visit back, visit my blog again on... Um, Oops, we're having an issue. Continue. Sorry, I hope you're still with me. I don't think you are. Oh boy, I might have to stop and start. Okay, I'm back, you guys. I'm gonna try to splice these together before I put them on YouTube. Anyways, um, I'm back and I want to share with you the rest of this broadcast, um, besides showing you the cards on my table, which you had seen. Um, I'm gonna bring you to my computer and quickly show you Emma's card, if I can pull that up again. There it is. Okay, so here we go. So this was Emma's card that inspired me. Uh, again, she's from um, CoastalCrafter.com. So let's go back to my desk, and we're going to show off the... Oops, hang on. We're going to bring in the prizes. <laughs> I remembered the prizes this time. We are having a yellow glare in this room. It's so annoying. I'm not sure what happened. Okay, this is the one that's fresh. Okay, so these are the prizes, you guys. Um, prize winners are going to get some fun new product. Uh, new in that I haven't used it. This is actually retired. It's a fast fuse adhesive. It's awesome. Um, I have a ton of these. So you can get a fast fuse adhesive and a set of mini dimensionals. Or you can choose the um, clear faceted gems and a roll of our shimmer ribbon in the pear pizzazz color. So these are the prizes for today. Good stuff, good stuff. Okay, thank you you guys for coming back. This is basically for the prize drawing and just to tell you what's going on for next time. Um, I'm gonna talk a little bit about paper pumpkin at the end here too, but so sorry this video is too long. Maybe that's why I got kicked off. <laughs> I don't know. Anyway, so these are the prizes and the lucky winner from today's broadcast will be able to pick between the two of them. And then the other person next week that I draw will choose, uh, will actually get the, the part that's um, left over, okay? So this was from last week's. So two different rolls of ribbon, but along with that, they got to have a bookmark sent to them with the ribbon. So our second winner from last week's broadcast actually has a choice too. Let's first draw our winner from last week's broadcast. Let's cheer them on. I'm so excited. Let's get our computer up here. Okay, I think we're in. I'm gonna refresh this. Actually, I don't need to refresh it for this. Hang on, here we go. Okay, we're on. We're gonna grab the URL from Fable Friends. That was our last broadcast. Copy the link and put it in our random comment picker here. And how many people have a, um, a chance at this? 168 people have a chance at this prize. So who's gonna be the winner from last week? You get to, Again, you get to pick the roller ribbon you want and you get that bunny bookmark sent to you. And that is Lisa Sawyer Cardoza. Congratulations, Lisa. Make sure that you message me if you see this. I'm gonna click on this link so that I make sure that I remember to come back to you. Now let's refresh our screen. 
and find today's video. And those of you that commented um, will get entered into the prize drawing for today. Yay. Sorry, it's still loading. Hang on. Almost there. There we go. Okay. Oops. Wood textures. And let's grab our URL from that. 17? Wait a minute. I have more than 17 people with me, don't I? <laughs> oh, you know what it's doing? It's doing right now. <laughs> okay, hang on. Because we, we had to split this video into two. I'm like, there's more than 17 names. Is there something wrong with this? We have two videos going on right now. Um, I'm going to go from the last one. Sorry, you guys. Um, the Wood Textures channel card, uh, the main video. <laughs> I'm feeling so bad that we had to stop that broadcast. Okay, how many were on the main one? Thanks for the 17 who came back for the last part of this video. 120 of you. Let's click the start button. <laughs> Did you see that? I'm like, I'm so hurt. Only 17 watched the whole time? I swear there were more people. Tiffany Anderson. <laughs> Yay, Tiffany. You are the winner from today's um, main broadcast. <laughs> and you get to pick when we come back to you. Now, if you have any questions about the die cutting machine or um, the trimmer, you can contact me, private message me. I did put a little blurb on my blog on today's post. You can see April 10th at stampyourartout.com. Um, I'm talking about the trimmer and the big shot and there is a link right here for more information which will lead you to this Q&A about the die cutting, okay? So lots of good questions and answers were shared in there. And I think, I think I have it all. Oh, the last thing before I move away from the computer. Know that the next paper pumpkin kit is gonna be mouthwatering. I'm just gonna tell you right now. You can see here in the description, it's gonna include nine cards, three of three kinds, uh, uh, what did they say? An adorable gift box. The coordinating colors are the ones that you see here and typically, there are major hints in these advertisements that Stampin' Up! makes for their paper pumpkin boxes. So I'm guessing this is a hint. Um, look at the pretty spattering and the watercolor look. Whew, I just love it. I'm so excited. So, paper pumpkin. Last day to get subscribed or resubscribe to get that April kit is today. Make sure that you follow the link in this video. Um, you can also visit my blog at stampyourartout.com. Let's pull that up here. And you can click on the Paper Pumpkin tab or you can just look at today's post and there's a link in there. Thank you, everyone. The next time I'm going to broadcast is next week. And know that next week, yes, congratulations to the winner. As Tiffany's excited. Yay. <laughs> oh, you're excited about the Paper Pumpkin, too. And you won. How nice is that? <laughs> um, next week, I'm going to hopefully have some new products in my hands. Um, I'll at least have some things that I got to take home with me from the onstage, but I like to expedite. So I'm hoping that I'll have some new stuff to play with in my broadcast next week. So visit. <laughs> we'll see you next week. And um, thanks everyone. Take care. Thanks for joining me. Now I'd like you all to go and stamp your art out. Bye-bye.